I'm going to an absolute bucket list football match in this video. For a lot of you, the biggest football matches in the world that you might want to visit would be Liverpool versus Man United, the Merseyside derby, the Old Firm derby, Der Clasico in Germany, or El Clasico in Spain. But what about Bell Clasico? The two biggest and most well-supported clubs in Northern Ireland, Glentoran and Linfield, will face off in this video. I've covered both clubs a lot on many different occasions, but I've never been to the Belfast derby. Linfield with their 56 league titles are the world's most successful football club in terms of top tier titles. They'll be the away side tonight at the iconic oval on the east side of Belfast, the home of Glen Torrin. This one's been known to kick off in the past, but let's hop on the ferry and head to Belfast. Okay, so where can I use this £10? On the ship, just anywhere, yeah? Okay. Lane number six, and then what, what time's the... One ish. Thankfully, we're here early. Right. We are at the Sai Ferry Terminal. Here we are. Usually, when I get here an hour early, you, you don't want to turn up right at the time you're going to sail. You usually got like check in. I just got searched and stuff. Car got searched. And you got to get on and stuff. Usually, here 30 to 60 minutes before taking off. But there's a 75 to 90 minute delay. A technical issue on the boat or something, so that's annoying. But um, thankfully, yeah, booked the early-ish one. Should have been taken off at half 11, but it's gonna be a lot later than that now. But we're buzzing. Anyway, it should be fine. We should still get to Belfast well in time for this video. The other day, I did a bucket list vlog. The smallest team in Europe, settlement size, lock all in Northern Ireland. I've done a lot of Northern Irish videos before, but today, of all the derbies in the world, I've always wanted to come to Linfield versus is Glen Torren. Well, today it's Glen Torren versus Linfield, but we've got a long old wait ahead of us now. Let's go do some editing. Let's go and chill in the terminal and see what we can see. <laughs> because of the delay though, we're given a £10 voucher to spend on the boat, so hopefully we can get some scran and some caffeine in there. I didn't want to pay in there if I knew I was getting some scran on the boat, so fingers crossed we should be on pretty soon. We're finally on. This is out of flying, out of getting trains, coaches, driving. This is the best way to go ground hopping. I always love it. Please be aware of moving vehicles and be careful of I got all of this for 50p. And right, we've got the coffee. We can refill them as much as we want. We are gonna see if we can head up the sun deck. I don't know if we've quite taken off yet. There's a spa. Sun deck, let's try this. Have we taken off? I can't tell if we're moving or not. It's sunny up on the sun deck. Are we moving? Are we moving? Yeah, I think we are. We must have literally just taken off as I was walking upstairs. All right, cool. This journey usually takes two, two and a half hours, something like that. But here we go, Strand Ra's just down there. Done a lot of vlogs down there and uh, I was just honestly frothing over this journey I am. Love coming on these boats. Love doing, doing? Love doing new derbies. Love ticking off all these bucket list videos that I've been meaning to do for so long. Love drinking coffee, love when it's sunny. Feeling extremely grateful right now. A massive thanks to everybody who watches these videos. Lens is a bit bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> just don't be bad. You all right? How you doing? You vlogging? Are you? We're for YouTube. No, just like Instagram reels and all. How's the DJI? Is yeah, it good? good. It's good. It's really good. Nice. It's gimbal is good. Like a yeah, I know. Stabi better. Stability must yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah. So where are you heading? Just Belfast or? Yeah. Belfast. Just a giant causeway route. Giant causeway. Yeah. yeah. Where are you from? Uh, from India, yeah. but like we are in. Scott. Working in. Uh, are you working yeah. in the UK? Have you been on this boat before? No, no, first time. First time. First time to Northern Ireland. Nice, nice. Enjoy, yeah. All Cheers, right. lads. All the best. Here's the room. It will do the job. 
there's not really much of a view to show you outside. Anyway, I'm gonna upload a TikTok right now. So if you're not following me on TikTok, please, please do. I recently got TikTok. I only had it from like earlier this year. So uh, still trying to build it up. So if you're watching this and you haven't followed me over on TikTok, the Sam North over there, gonna upload one just now. And then I've actually got to get going. The delay's kind of screwed my plans, but yeah, um, I'll see you when we're on the way to the Oval, come on. Actually, before we go, just check this out, lads. Look, so the Big Two Derby, it's known as officially, but Look at that, also Bell Classico. I'm not not calling it Bell Classico. The term Big Two did not always refer to Linfield and Glen Torrent. Up until 1949, the Big Two were considered Linfield and Belfast Celtic. They have an incredible story, and that's probably a topic for a completely different day. These are the league results, all the ones in blue are Linfield wins, green Glen Torrent wins, grey are draws. Look at that, a lot more blue than green on there, but they are a lot more successful team are... Uh, Linfield in terms of trophies, there was a 7-3 here in 1959 on the 25th of December. Christmas Day 1959, a 7-3. What the hell is that all about? They have played each other a total of 648 times. How many of those are like actual official games? But the League Irish Cup, League Cup, County Antrim Shield, Europa League Playoff, which Glen Torren won, Satanta Cup, Gold Cup. Look, some of these are like the Floodlit Cup, the Belfast Charity Cup, the Alhambra Cup. Some of these things obviously don't exist anymore. But uh, Linfield 306, Glen Torren 189, Draws 153. Kenny, how long have you been working here at Glentoran? About 12 years. 12 years, same place? Doing this? Uh, no, I was inside and then somebody couldn't make it and they pulled me down to take it over me, no problems. And I've been here ever since. You're out in the cold, do you enjoy it? Um, well, to go to the truth, I don't mind it because I'm all wrapped up. I'm used to it, I've done yeah, it before. Nice. And it's just the way it is, but it's where it goes. It's is great. there any different preparations for a game like tonight playing Linfield than there is usually? Everything's a bit more Everybody, everybody has to get things done quick because you know they're going to come the bus. We all have to get everything ready for the bus, get all the cones. And so both team buses will come through this entrance, yeah? Just one team bus. The, the, the Glen Turn come in their cars. Oh, okay, right. Linfield. Every, any, any other team that comes on a bus, it's, it's the same. Is it quite an exciting derby then? I've never been to this derby always before. What is. should I expect? It always is. Boxing Day is the one. The one yep. you want to be at. But still, I'm hoping tonight's good under the lights as well. Here we go, we'll watch him in action. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Not too bad. I'm alright, how are you? Everyone knows him. Nice, here we go. This is my possibly favourite room in world football. The Vienna Cup, it wasn't here last time I came. I think it's it... not back yet. It's my first Belfast derby tonight. What should I expect? Um, good atmosphere. Um, a feisty game, I'm sure. Um, and I'm, I would imagine it'll be a, you know, a good atmosphere. Yeah. Um, what do they like to play in these atmospheres? Uh, good, good. Um, used to them by now. Um, but you know, here over at the Oval here, you know, it's a nice service. And um, as I say, it'll be a good atmosphere. and. Mm -hmm and hopefully it'll be an enjoyable game and, and we'll get the result that we want. And for you personally, how do you feel going into these games? You played one game for Glen Torren and then you played almost 800, I think, yeah, or 750-ish yeah. for Linfield. How do you feel going into these um, big matches? I still get excited, um, still look forward to it, still enjoy them, obviously, if, if, if you win. Um, but look, they're big matches, big occasions. Um, and Obviously, you know, the fans from both clubs, you know, really look forward. and and really, you know, want the bragging rights. Um, so yeah, so even at my age, thoroughly enjoy them, yeah. still get excited for them, um, and just, you know, can't wait to get going. And with Lan playing in Europe this season, they've dropped a few points in the league after the European games, I think. Do you really have some big confidence now going into the rest of the league that you can go and get the title back for the first um, time in a couple of years? Look, we're in a good position at the minute. Um, we haven't even reached Christmas yet. Uh, and obviously, you know, we had a great result last week against Lauren. So, look, they've set the benchmark over the past few years. Um, we're playing catch-up, you know, to, 
to get ahead of them um, and we're doing things right at the minute um, but as I say it's not even Christmas yet and you know it's important that we win here tonight to keep the the, the eight point gap that we have um, and to keep building confidence and momentum. Your name was? John Moore. And so what is your role here at Glintor? Uh, one of the 1882 directors, yeah. And so how long have you been coming to football matches here at the Oval then? Um, a long, long time. 1967, 1967, I think was my first one, yeah. So. Wow, okay, so you've seen it all? I've seen most of it, yeah. This is my first Belfast derby, what should I expect? Uh, hopefully the same as what we got the last time. Nunfield scoring one and us scoring three. Yeah, it was a good yeah, result you got that, that last that, one, wasn't it? Yeah. Take that, yeah. And so, um, Linfield, with Larn being in Europe this season, I think Linfield have got a good crack at the league, but what would it mean for Glenn Torin to go and win the league eventually? It's been a while, I think, since It's been won. a while. 2009, under the late Alan McDonald, was the, the last time I won it. Yeah. The win the league would be just superb. Even qualifying for Europe yeah. would be great on an Irish Cup win. Yeah, amazing. And so this stadium, I absolutely love it. I think it's fair to say it probably needs a little bit of TLC here or there. Absolutely. And yeah. there's talk about maybe building a new one. If they do that, I hope they keep some of the old, keep a bit of the charm. But I've always wanted to have my first Bell Classico here rather than at Windsor. I don't yeah. know, I just feel like the charm of it absolutely. is great. Would you uh, agree? Yeah, yeah. And every home game now, we're getting groundhoppers from all over Europe yeah. wanting to come on the groundhoppers list it's in the top three yeah it, it made a list didn't it of the stadiums, visit, stadiums yeah. see before you die yeah, yeah. so everyone so. watching get down here for a game absolutely and you can book a pre-match tour and we'll look after you Bobby McGregor yeah yep so he was a Glenthorne physio he's a Northern Ireland national team physio yep he also managed the club here for a while traded players from all over the country but we played CSK Sofia in Bulgaria in 1981. Mm -hmm. He ran on the pitch in the second half to treat a player, collapsed and died, a heart attack. So this room is named after him? Uh, yeah. Every time I come, there's a new room that I've not been in. Right. That you're just like, wow. So what, what is this? This right. is the supporters? So, Nick Gensborn, Supporters Committee, 1923. The oldest supporters club in Ireland. Okay, yeah. Uh, obviously 100 years old last year. So this is our club rooms where we meet on every other Wednesday. So what's your favourite piece of memorabilia in here? The newspaper. Yeah. So we hadn't beaten an infield at Winter Park for 17 years. Yeah. And we were 1-0 down after 5 or 10 minutes in that game and won 8-1. 8-1? Is that your biggest win against them? Yeah. What should I expect from tonight? Belfast derby, my first one. Glenn to win. Glenn's to win, yeah. What are you saying for the score? 3-0 games. And what would you say is the best derby in the world? Bell Classico. Bell Classico? Uh, no other's come close. Nope. And you've got a YouTube channel? Yeah. Which is called? Uh, the Glen Torn Wanderer. What is the Bell Classico like? What is this derby like? It's my first one. Well, I have to tell you, it's the biggest derby in Northern Ireland. And it's always going to be fierce and it will always be fierce. So if we can grab a, another win, just like Windsor Park, it'll be a really special moment. It's my first Bell Classico today. What would you say is the best derby in the world? Uh, range of Celtic probably. It's good having a big derby at night. Obviously all the big derbies that I go to in Scotland are usually midday. This is so cool. I absolutely love Northern Ireland. I love covering football here. The access that I get is just incredible. All the clubs are amazing, including Niffle as well. There's David from Niffle right there. You've seen him, on, seen him on my vlogs before, but on the pitch of the biggest derby in the country before the game. That's why I love this country. I love Scotland as well, obviously. It's like a little mini Scotland here. I really like the uh, reception that I get here in Northern Ireland. Everyone's always so, so friendly, so, so welcoming. And uh, yeah, players are about to come out. Atmosphere's starting to build. And I'm glad that I'm seeing my first Bell Classico in this stadium, because it is so classic, it is so old. <laughs> They don't really do pies in Northern Ireland, correct me if I'm wrong, no club I can really ever think of, I could be completely wrong, I might just be forgetting, but no clubs really do pies, like the clubs don't really sell pies, you usually get burger vans in and a chicken and bacon burger in. Look at this, what a view, <laughs> and I'm a bit out of breath, but you've got that old stand over there, another old stand over there, that's where the loudest Glen Toron fans are, and the away fans are all around there. Then you've got all this banking up here that we're on. There's all people standing around here. Now you don't get views like this. 
I suppose we've just seen that like ten, five, ten minutes ago. These guys stood here. You know, the view is better here. I'm, I'm surprised not more are starting. Last, yeah. The last game we came to, but to be fair, was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. It was the middle of the day, so you could literally see everything. Yeah, all of Belfast. Uh, it was already started. <laughs> So here's the table, Linfield currently top, good lead, Glen Torren comfortably mid-table, champions from the last two seasons, Lana in ninth, but they've played a lot fewer games because of all the European games, and where we were last weekend, Lockall down at the bottom. Oh, we're thinking a goal on the stroke of half-time? Oh, oh, it was a goal on the stroke of half-time, called it! The grass bank goes wild. Oh, right on the stroke of half time, lads. It was worth standing up here for. After completing that extra minute. Oh. <laughs> this game needed that goal. It's been a pretty poor game so far, to be honest. Look at that for a view with the floodlights on. And these little kids celebrating up here. There we go, half time. Booze from the away end, which is all around there. Right, it's Baltic up here. I'm going around there for the second half. This is my first Belfast derby today. And they always like this, a bit cagey. Um, they're very up and down. It can be, oh, it can be goals or it can be cagey like this, but they're a pretty boring game of day in the first half, but the end of the turf, yeah. one nil. And Linfield are obviously doing well this season. Yes. For them to lose today in the title race, that'll be pretty bad for them. They've already lost at home to Glen's this season, haven't they? I do. Well, I don't. I wouldn't mind probably every game, but um, I, they're doing well this year. I think they could probably, if there was a game to drop points, it would be this game. Yeah, you'll all know that I'm a fan of these older stadiums, especially these ones where um, there's a lot of freedom to move around, and I'm in this big main stand here for the second half. We were all the way around there like, for the first half. It was a cagey one in the first half, but I'm glad we seen a goal and uh, it'd be iconic if we could see Glen Torren win at this stadium against Linfield. Oh, that's what we love in derbies. For anyone watching from further afield and you're not aware, David Healy is the Linfield manager. Glenn's had a player sent off. Second yellow for a high foot. It wasn't the worst challenge in the world. It didn't look that high, but Jamie Mulgrew, who we interviewed earlier, went down for the header. One of them where, oh, either way, you'd sort of understand. I can understand why he's given a yellow. I'd have understood it if he didn't as well. But to send a player off in a derby like this for that. Oh, Glenn's down to 10 men here. Some of the coaching staff and the players are fuming. He's getting applauded off. 30 minutes to play with 10 men, a goal up. Oh, save. Some serious Linfield pressure now. Oh, keeper spilled it. He's made some good saves today, the um, Glen Torren keeper, but I imagine that away end will go mental if Linfield end up turning this one around. Oh, it's getting cold, hence the uh, hood. So I'm glad we're not on the mound anymore, but if you've never been to this stadium before, you have to come for the mound alone. Go and stand up there and watch the game properly, even if it's cold. Um, yeah, I've been here a couple of times before, and you've always got to watch at least a little bit from over there. But what an iconic place. This game's really, really hot up now. Since the red card, Linfield are getting a lot more of the ball as they go forward now. But yeah, there's a lot of feistiness, a lot of tackles flying in. And the atmosphere's really starting to build as well. Linfield have got a free kick. Healy wanted the pen there. He's raging.
Manager's getting the crowd going. God, the Glens manager is getting so animated. <laughs> it's more entertaining watching the managers today than some of the players, I'll be honest. Look at him. Linfield have looked well off it today. It's like the first time Glen Torren have been in the Linfield half. Look at them all. Bobby approaching stoppage time now. God, the passion of this manager, man. Oh my God. Is the ref going to wave him back on? Glen Torren still down to nine men here. Back on, there we go. The manager. seconds to go now. Everyone's standing up in here. Here we go. We've seen Glen Torren do the double over Linfield. This stand is rocking by the way. Oh. It's a proper derby. It's kicking off now. What does that win mean to you and all the rest of the Glens fans? Well, it means that we're in our club, so it does. You've always, done the double over them this season. It's always good, they're going to be our better rival, so it's yeah. always good. And this stand is absolutely rocking. Oh, wow, it is. Good atmosphere Every game, here. regardless of whether it's the rivals or not, every game, yeah. always rocking. So really good support here, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Best support in the league. How were those last 30 minutes for you? Stressful? Stressful's not even the word. Oh, honestly, Stressful's not even the word. But to beat Linfield for the second time this season, when they're going for the league as well, that must mean a lot to you and the rest of the fans here. Oh, of course it was. It's you even seen it yourself. The atmosphere, the ultras as well. Just the passion here is so good. Yeah. Especially when we beat the Blues. How good is the keeper? I don't know. He's great. The best keeper in the league. Yeah, he was unbelievable. What's his name? Oh, uh, Gary Is he from? Uh, Where's where he from? He's Hungarian. Oh, he's Hungarian. Yeah. yeah okay. Nice. And um, how good is the atmosphere in this stand oh, as well? It's great. It's great. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow Grand Topper from England. Yeah. Is this your first Belfast derby? Yeah, well, my first time in Northern Ireland completely. Wow, okay. Yeah. What a start so, to your yeah. Northern Irish football. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant, life. mate. 1 0. Red card, you know, clinging on for dear life towards the end, mate. It was really good. Like, the atmosphere was Had it all. No so VAR much better as well in this I know. league. I know, I know. Old school. What were like, you going to say then? The atmosphere is so much the better. The than... atmosphere was so much better than I anticipated it to be. I yeah, was okay. expecting it to come here. I didn't realise how much these two teams hated each other, but yeah, like, yeah. I was up there by where all the lads standing up was. Yeah. It was like. Rocking they, in there, they, wasn't it? They, yeah. hate, they, hate, they hate them. Declan, I can see you getting quite animated during the game. Um, is that just because it was the Belfast derby, or are you like that in most matches? No, listen, I thought I thought it was a very harsh. Listen, we're under serious pressure. A, a fantastic side came here and put us under huge pressure in the second half. Uh, I think it's a very harsh second yellow card. Um, you can't see behind him. He's trying to hook the ball on, and his, I don't think his foot's up high enough. They it was want quite him. low, wasn't it? It's yeah. really low, and, and to be fair, their players' heads down. But look, we, we had a we had a regroup. We had a dig in, and uh, I think out of everything, the players deserve huge credit because 
Lanfield had us like a tidal wave for 25 minutes and they were able to withstand that and hold out uh, really cling on with our fingernails as testimony to the players because they showed amazing commitment and desire to win the game. You always want to have 11 players on the pitch obviously but I felt like in a game like today where you were already ahead to go down to 10 men is it almost not easier in a way but you know what you have to do then don't you you just have to get back and defend not easy I'm not saying I know what you're saying but I you just know what you've got to do then, I honestly you? would you want prefer to have 11 because it's very difficult look it's very difficult against the team so far clear at the top of the table to be yeah. able to come and dig in for as long as we had to dig in but again the resilience and, and commitment of the players I think is, is huge and I think it was epitomised by our captain tonight I think Marcus Kane gets the goal gets the winner but his ability to, to, to lead a very inexperienced back four we have a 20 year old uh, right back who has been out for 8 or 9 months uh, we have a 20 year old just turned last week right side of centre back and a 24 year old left back so for him to marshal that back four and get the players in front of him with the with effort of Sully's and Singleton's to be able to really dig in, I think he epitomises what the performance was to me. How good was the atmosphere in here as well? It was fantastic and I've said this before, you know, when everybody's pulling in one direction, this whole stadium, you can nearly feel every creak, you yeah. can nearly feel every inch. I could um, see you're enjoying it as well. I love it, love yeah. it. Listen, but we, we, there's no point doing this tonight and then going and and losing our next game. We have to build on this. We've been inconsistent this year. Yep. It's a new group, it's a young group, but we have to find that consistency now to really push on. How was that to play in for you today? Like it's a derby game, it's blood and thunder. I think the fans got what, got what they wanted. Um, obviously it wasn't uh, ideal going down to 10 men, but you know, we got over the line. Yeah, I'd said that to you, Gaffer, like, I'm not saying it's easy, right? But when you go down to 10 men, you sort of just know what you've got to do. You're ahead, you just got to yeah, it's sort defend. Of, and yeah, it's just head, kick, you know. Keep them away, try and get defend the balls in the box, and yeah, I think we've done that in abundance. And you know, you see some of the blocks, unbelievable. Keeper made some great saves as well, didn't he? Keeper, big down, been brilliant for us uh, yeah. since he's come in. And this was my first Belfast derby today. Is that right? um, yeah, what are they? What do they mean to yourself, the rest of the players in the city? I think uh, like what we had, uh, we talked before the match, and it means everything. You know, both sides. You know, and I've been a part of both sides, and it means a lot, and it's. It's a game that uh, runs deep into Belfast history. That is why I love Northern Irish football. The passion, the access that I get, being on the pitch of the biggest derby in the country, interviewing players, managers, like the access that I get in this country is unbelievable. The access that I get in Scotland is pretty good, let's be honest. Um, there's still a few quite tough nuts to crack um, in some of the bigger teams um, and some of the things I'd love to do with some of them. But over here in Northern Ireland, like I just get free reign um, and I absolutely love it. I really appreciate everyone at Nick all the league, um, all the different clubs that I visit and stuff and just the access. And I've got more videos coming up this weekend that I can't wait to bring to you. But yeah, just that game. I'm really, really glad um, that I went in the end. The first 44 minutes, I was like, oh my God, it's just going to be one of them derbies where I've been to a lot of them. And I mentioned this a lot. A lot of derbies are cagey because both teams would rather draw than not lose. And so they don't try to win. I think that's the case with a lot of derbies that I've been to. Some derbies you go to are amazing, um, but some are really, really cagey. A lot of the Edinburgh derbies that I've been to have been like that. And this one was a little bit like that today for a large spell of the first half. Then the goal went in and the red card and the tension at the end of the game. I hope that came across in the video. Um, and yeah, just the access that I get and the welcome that I get. Everybody's so friendly over here. There's a hell of a lot of Rangers fans in this city, and I'm sure like they've seen a lot of my videos. There's a lot of Celtic fans as well, but coming to like Linfield and Glen Torrin games, they're mainly going to be the Rangers side of things. But um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone who comes up and says hello and watches the videos. Um, and if you're new to the channel, if you haven't seen the videos before, please subscribe. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, so I'm also on TikTok now as well. That's quite a new thing. I did film a TikTok today, um, so that should hopefully be out at some point this weekend as well but yeah I need to stop rambling on and actually get this video edited it's almost 11 o'clock at night I've got a video vlog to get up for tomorrow and another one to get up for the next day and then get the ferry back on Sunday so yeah a huge thanks I'm really buzzing to be back in Northern Ireland absolutely love it one of my favourite places to come and vlog in the world um, and I've been to some pretty crazy places but this one is always always up there with one of the best a huge thanks for watching I'll leave a couple of my I'll leave a Northern Irish video and I'll leave one of my best Scottish videos as well so if you want a bit of a flavour on what I get up to back home it's my Scottish stuff if you want to watch some more Northern Irish videos, then yeah, get on over to that one. All right, cheers and goodbye.